Whether you're a forager, naturalist or simply enjoy being out bush, fungi offer a way of understanding not just natural ecosystems, but human interactions and social systems as well. G'day, my name's Alison Puglio. In this final video in the series, we bring together some of the themes and concepts from earlier videos and take a closer look at a couple of interesting species that grow in Australia. While many fungi grow in soil and the organic matter on the forest floor, don't forget to look up. On the trunks of eucalypts, you might just see a common and impressive species. And it has a great name, the white punk Latiporus portentosis. It's a polypore, and it also grows in New Zealand, New Guinea and South America. The white punk forms large, conspicuous brackets on the sides of trees. As a saprotroph, it plays an important ecological role as a recycler of organic matter. It also contributes to hollow formation, hollows being critical habitat for a great range of invertebrates, birds and other wildlife. You might have been wandering in the bush and seen what looks like a hunk of old polystyrene. It is in fact an old punk that has fallen off a tree, perhaps because rain has filled it up like a sponge and the additional weight has caused it to break away from the trunk. Sometimes these fungi distort into the strangest forms and look positively alien. Fungi are not only eaten by many animals but also provide critical habitats for myriad invertebrates. This fungal real estate is sometimes hotly contested. Maggots and ants don't always agree. The white punk has an interesting cultural history as well. Its many utilitarian values are recognised by various Indigenous people, such as Aboriginal Australians and the Māori people of New Zealand. The Wiradjuri of central New South Wales, for example, use it as tinder, as a source of light and to transport fire. I might just try that myself sometime. On first glance, this looks a little like a field mushroom. From above, the general form and the white convex pileus appear similar to species in the genus Agaricus. However, we won't know for sure until we have a look at the hymenium on the underside. We usually use a mirror to view the underside, but in this instance, I'll remove the whole specimen so we can have a really close look. And it's important to take the whole thing so that we can examine the stipe as well. Hmm. It seems to be quite deep in the soil. Uh, here we go. Okay, so what have we got here? You'll note straight away from the colour of the lamellae that it's not a field mushroom. This is a cortinaire or web cap. It's Cortinarius australiensis or the skirt web cap. Note the pale straw coloured lamellae, the tapering stipe and the remains of the veil. As the pileus has expanded, the veil is broken and left the remnants on the stipe as a skirt or annulus. With this immature specimen, the stipe is almost as wide as the pileus. Here you can see the veil starting to break away, revealing the lamellae underneath. The pileus has flattened out in these mature specimens. The skirt web cap can be readily distinguished by its rust brown spores that are often visible as a deposit on the well-developed annulus. While potentially toxic to Homo sapiens, it seems that some native mammals find it pretty tasty. The days are drawing shorter now and the temperature is dropping down. The fungi will soon disappear for the season, but of course, they're not really going anywhere. Their mycelia will linger in the subterrain, awaiting the perfect conditions to reproduce and reveal themselves again next autumn. I do hope you can join me sometime out bush in our extraordinarily mega diverse land. Ciao for now.